Yo, what is going on YouTube? We had a brand new video. Now this one, very important, very important. Okay, and then I mentioned very important. All right, so as you can tell from the title of this video, it's I talked to a hedge fund manager. Here's what I learned, okay? So if you guys don't know, I'm a server, right? I work at a restaurant and um, I, I serve everybody, right? To, you know, your average smojo, to, you know, people who are very wealthy, to whoever, you know, comes in the restaurant. Like I've seen all walks of life through there, right? So... I didn't know this was a hedge fund manager. Now, how this happened, guys, it was one of my last tables of the night. And I'm going to get to what we're going to go over here in the video in a second. But I just wanted to kind of introduce you to how I knew he was a hedge fund manager, right? So, my last table of the night. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to mess with this guy. I don't know why I chose this dude. It was almost like it was like meant to be almost. And what was very crazy about this was... That the dude pulls out a Bank of America credit card, right? And he was going to split the bill with his friend. So then I was like, oh, he's got a Bank of America credit card, right? And if you guys have been living under a rock, you know that Bank of America is very corrupt. They're very exposed to this market right now. And this whole market is going to collapse here very, very soon. So I, I just wanted to kind of mess with him. A lot of people don't know about finance. So I just wanted to kind of like give him some advice. Like, hey, you shouldn't bank with Bank of America, right? Little did I know he pretty much runs Bank of America. Okay. So this was very odd to me to where I, I mentioned him. I'm like, hey, I'm like, do you have a Bank of America bank account? And then the guy's like, oh, you know, actually it's a bit complicated. And I was like, well, what do you mean complicated? He was like, well... I actually don't have a Bank of America account. I manage people's portfolios at Bank of America. Okay, so guys, it's me again. And a very important piece of information I probably should have mentioned was that this dude was managing $3 billion, he told me, of other people's money, right? Which I never mentioned in this video, which is, you know, something I definitely needed to mention. So that's why I'm adding this here. He managed $3 billion of other people's money. So... Yeah, the dude, the dude was jacked to the tits, I think, of America. And I was like, oh, so you're like a portfolio manager? And then he was like, yeah, you know, somewhat. And then, you know, we start talking. And then I was like, oh, so like, you know, what do you think about AMC? Do you think there's fake synthetic shares? And then once I started mentioning AMC, he started getting very annoyed and very angry at me, um, which I knew right away that something was up with that. And for all my crypto people... AMC is a very manipulated stock, okay? And it's very corrupt, and there's a lot of financial corruption involved with AMC and GameStop and that whole scenario. So he says he has a big short position with AMC. All of his investors are very exposed to bonds and index funds in the market. All those are going to collapse. Whether AMC squeezes or not, the bond market and the stock market is going to absolutely get shredded to pieces, right? And he's managing a lot of people's money, okay? So I was telling him, so I was like, well, you're managing a lot of people's money. Like, shouldn't that, you know, scare you that, like, the market's about to collapse? And then he was like, eh, I don't think it's going to collapse. And he was very, I guess, very adamant that he was going to be okay. And I don't think he really knows the magnitude of how bad this is about to get. But there are some things that he taught me that I actually thought was good advice. There's also some things that he thought was good advice only because it worked out for him. So in this video, I'm going to be going over six things that he taught me. And I feel like this is very important for you guys to hear what he's saying because he gives some good advice. But a lot of advice that he gives that is good only worked for him because the markets only went up, right? So we're going to go to number one. I have it right here on a notepad so I don't forget it. I wrote it down once I was done talking to him. Um, so he said, every day is a coin flip to make money in the market, which is true, right? To an extent, like say if you hear something or know something about earnings coming up for a company and then you short it or buy it, however you think the earnings are going to go, you could say that's gambling, but you're having a good guess to that gambling. It's kind of like poker. If you have pocket aces, you know, you have a good hand, so you want to play it. You know, if you have like a five and a three, you don't want to play it, right? So it's like high probability gambling when you play stuff daily, like day trading and stuff like that. And then he says every five years has a 70% chance to make money. So this is better than the coin flip, he said. So if you're playing it day by day, you're coin flipping and gambling. 
but he says every five years has a 70% chance to make money. That's a big edge for you as the investor. Then he said every 10 years has a 90% chance to make you profit, right? Make you money. Then he says every 15 years has a 100% chance to make you money. Now that is actually very sound advice because if we look at, you know, the stock market and how it's performed, over a 15 year period, no one has ever lost money in the history of the stock market. But the stock market's only been around for like 100 or so years, right? So how accurate is this? It's only accurate to about six intervals, seven intervals. So I would take that with a grain of salt, okay? Just because it's been like this seven times in a row and this for 15 year block periods doesn't mean it's going to keep doing that, okay? He's just going by history, right? But according to history, you have a 100% chance if you hold your money in the market for 15 years. And he was telling me, you're young, so you should do that. So I start thinking about crypto. I'm not thinking about the stock market for that. I'm kind of implying everything he's telling me about crypto. But this is what scares me. And you guys are probably wondering, why are you on the quant ownership page? And we're going to go into HBAR ownership in a second here. I'm very glad he told me this because I was like, I need to tell my viewers about this now. This is very important. If you have your life savings in crypto like me, you need to know this information. But I believe, oh, never mind. This is number two. Perfect. So number two, you need to have ownership in what you're invested in or you don't own it. Now I asked him, I was like, well, what, is, well, what does that mean, right? And he was telling me pretty much when you own a stock like Apple, you own a part of the company, right? And if the company does something dumb, you lose money. But if Apple is making good moves, releases the iPhone 14, everyone's buying it, blah, blah, blah. You make money with Apple. You are a part of Apple. You own Apple. As a shareholder, you have rights to Apple. With crypto, it's different. Um, he wasn't telling me anything about crypto. I asked him, well, what do you think about crypto? He says he's neutral on it. He doesn't hate it. He doesn't love it. He's neutral. And he didn't really have a lot to say. He knew what quant was. He didn't know how he felt about it. So I thought it was very interesting he knew what quant was. And I'm still mind blown as to just how I randomly wanted to mess with this dude. And then we're having this back and forth half an hour conversation at my table. <laughs> so um, pretty much this is why this is scary, guys. You don't actually own quant. And you don't actually own H bar. You own it to a certain extent. And this is where I feel like this gets really scary. I'm going to make a whole other video on this that will be uploaded to my channel tomorrow going into really detail about this whole ownership things. But I'm going to briefly touch base with it right now. So pretty much, um, quant right here, guys. If we go back to right... Hold on. I think my face is in the way of this. I don't want to butcher this. So... Institutional holders can own millions shares of quant, and when they decide to sell, it says the crypto coin will go down. That's what it was saying, okay? And you could find all this info right here on Macro Axis. I will leave a link for this in the description, okay? But there's many types of institutional investors, it says. Banks, hedge funds, insurance companies, pension plans. One of the main advantages they have over retail investors is the fees paid for trades, as they are building in large quantities, they can manage their costs more effectively. Now, that doesn't really matter in the long term, okay? But this is what matters. Institutional holders can own millions of shares of quant, and when they decide to sell, the crypto coin, the coin will often sell off, which may instantly impact shareholders' value. So traders who get in early, near the beginning of institutional investors' buying cycle, could potentially generate profits. Now, Again, you don't really own quants. You're not a part of the quant project, I guess. You don't have ownership of it, but you have ownership of, I guess, the shares of quant. So these institutions could just dump on you, which I guess is true. It could happen in the stock market. But the ownership of crypto is very different from how it is from a stock. However, this isn't going to change my conviction on quant because I do feel like institutions are going to hop into quant. So this doesn't really matter, actually, guys. Um, I'm sorry if I scared you, but I just thought you should know about ownership because this was something I very overlooked. It's something a lot of, I guess, other crypto YouTubers overlook. I guarantee you if you go to any YouTuber who does crypto and you're like, okay, can you explain to me how I, as an investor of HBAR, have ownership? I guarantee 90% of them won't be able to give you a good answer. All right, And if they do, they're going to try to beat around the bush because they don't really know. I'm just finding this out, guys. I've been in HBAR for two years. I'm just finding out 
really about the in-depth of pretty much ownership of coins in the treasury, okay? I don't want to be a moon boy who's like, oh, H bar, blah, 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 and then just uh, ignore all the negatives, right? Because there are some negatives to everything we have to look at, okay? So, not that big of negatives, though. We're still very bullish on quant and H bar. This doesn't really change anything in the long term. Um, because we know institutions are going to be hopping in institutions are not hopped in right now Therefore we are going to benefit right here when it says could potentially gen generate profits. That's gonna be us Okay, we're gonna generate the profits once all these guys hop in all right for the next bull cycle I will be selling probably half of everything in like the next bull run, which I believe is coming 2025 2026 whoever long we take to recover from the incoming financial crisis, okay? Now, I will touch more base on this in another video, but this is just something to know. Also, I'm going to summarize the whole H bar coin treasury thing, where pretty much all 36 count or 39 council members they split some of the H bar that's kept in the treasury, and then once their time is up, they take the money back, give it to the new person in the governance. Um, so yeah. I know that probably didn't make a lot of sense. I'll leave this here in case you don't want to wait for my video explaining this. I'll leave links to these all down below. I just didn't want to make this video that long. So we're going to number three now. You have to trade with no emotion. This is pretty straightforward. I've mentioned this a lot on my channel. You just cannot trade with emotion. Let me try to get my uh, dude back up here. There we go. So you can't trade with emotion because once you start trading with emotion, then uh, you're going to make bad plays. Okay. Like for example, when quant, you know, it looks like it's down 8% today. I haven't even checked, but it looks like it's down 8% according to microaxis. You know, if I were to look at my money and be like, oh man, I'm down a lot of money. I need to sell. I can't take this loss. Then obviously I'm not going to make it in the long run. Okay. But if I were to just know what I hold, know that quant, you know, is here to stay. It's going to be a part of the new financial system. I'm not using my emotion doing that. I'm making a logical decision to hold it until the next bull run. When I believe all the institutions come in, that is my logical play, right? I'm not using emotion for that. I'm looking at what's going on around me and I'm making a thesis off of that, right? So that's something very important that you guys should know. Never use emotions on trade. Only go by what you see and what makes sense to you. That's not using emotion, right? So number four, he mentions don't go by what you see online or here for a prediction or where an investment is going use technical analysis it never lies and has emotion okay now pretty much what he's saying is where you hear someone go xrp to one thousand dollars there's nothing to back that it's just a bunch of people who are saying that but then someone looks at it online and they're like xrp to a thousand dollars i'm buying xrp horrible decision right you shouldn't just be buying xrp because you hear someone go it's going to a thousand dollars right you should be looking into what xrp is doing who is trying to build on XRP, what XRP's situation is, and then making a decision based off of that. Because their financials and what they're doing doesn't lie. Like, for example, with HBAR, right? Like, if someone's like, HBAR's going to $1,000, I'm going to buy. You shouldn't buy it because someone said it's going to $1,000. You should buy it because Google, IBM, LG, Boeing, multiple banks are building on Hedera. That's why you should be buying it, right? That's... A decision made off what I'm looking at not because what someone's told me right so you got to do everything yourself okay you got to deep dive yourself very important all right now I know on my channel I have a lot of price predictions this and that um, I do believe in those price predictions though it's not much of like a clickbait thing I genuinely believe quants going to a hundred thousand dollars I genuinely believe that I genuinely believe H bar is going to a hundred dollars I genuinely believe these things right um, so now number five, day trading is dumb and gambling, investing is what you need. Now this kind of ties back to number one where every day is a coin flip and then after every five years there's a 70% chance to make money, every 10 years has a 90% and then 15 is 100%, right? So you shouldn't day trade or try to swing trade cryptos because it, it's just, it's too new, it's too volatile. If, if you do do well, great, you might have gotten lucky. You might think you're this great trader. However, you might have just gotten lucky. And, you know, th this thing's very volatile right now. Okay. But now we know guaranteed in the long term, this is going up. Projects like Quant and HBAR are going up. Okay. Now, we're going to end with this video right here, though, in a second. Um, 
but you guys know it's going up long term. So I even try to gamble your money and your buying power when you could just make a guaranteed profit, right? So that is very sound advice that he told me. Now, he says someone with more money invested into something gets the same percent returns as you do. Like, for example, if a big major bank puts one million in the quant, right? And say quant goes up 10%, they make 100,000, which seems like a lot to you. However, you make the same percent gain as they do with $10. So just make a dollar, okay? So you have to manage your money and manage your risk at your own pace, right? But that's pretty straightforward stuff. So that is everything he mentioned to me. The one things I did not like about what he was saying is pretty much how he said you're guaranteed to make money over 15 years. Now that only worked for him because he's been in a market that's only went up. And his negative about Bitcoin, he told me, was that Bitcoin only goes up and it's just an agreement to buy it at a higher price. Now, I contradicted a statement by saying, well, in the stock market, um, the stock market the, the stock market has only went up for the past 100 years, right? It's only went up. Obviously, there's downs and ups, but in the long run, it has only went up. Same with Bitcoin. It has only went up. The only thing that's changed is that the value of one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin, okay? Now, the U.S. dollar loses that value, okay? It's pretty obvious what's the better system. Um, and the dude was pretty much just supporting the Ponzi scheme of the U.S. economy. The U.S. economy is a Ponzi scheme. And that's why I believe he has bad advice because he is telling me to put my money in the stock market for 15 years. But I was saying, no, I'm going to do crypto. And he was like, okay. But I think that's bad advice because just because in his mind... He's like, oh, I put my money in the stock market for the past 30 years because he's an older dude and I've only made money. You should do it too. Just because it worked for you doesn't mean it's going to work for me, right? The only reason why it's only went up is because we've just kept on putting more money into it. That's the only reason why it's went up, right? But I feel like that's going to change here very soon with the new financial system. So that's something I disagreed with him on. And now here's something I want to show you guys that ties into what I just said. So we're going to watch this video real quick. We gonna pause the music. Okay. Lower prices in the short term might sound great for inflation, but there's one variable that's missing, which is the Federal Reserve. Because prices are beginning to drop, the Fed will likely revert back to printing money. The reason why I say this is because human behavior is predictable, and a similar situation happened in the 1970s as well. Because of the bull up effect, the stock market crashed in the early 1970s and prices dropped as well. As a result of this, the Fed ended up cutting interest rates to boost the market. This helped stocks rally in the short term, but also led to long-term inflation. Burry tweeted, the New York Times now short guys, term, this is very important. but also led- So right here, I bet this dude, right, in his logic, right, he's like, ah, in 1974, I just kept holding, you know? I, I just kept holding because in the long run, right? Led to long-term inflation. According to his logic, you know, if you hold for the next 10 years, you're going to make your money back, just like what you see in this chart right here. However, he only made his money back because they put more fake money into the market, right? Once the Fed just pumped more money. But then he thinks he's this guru trader who knows how to play the market because he's patient, right? But in reality, he only made money because of how corrupt the financial system was, okay? And he's thinking he's just, you know, guru trader. Burry. And only what's going to end up happening is in the long run, he's going to lose money if he keeps holding because this will not sustain itself, right? They're just digging themselves a deeper hole every time they put more money into the economy. So that is a very crucial piece of information for you. Tweeted the New York Times front page a day after the Dow bottom and just 3% in six period in U.S. history. Yep. All of you that that's just it, scratching the surface. Government leaders have been actively insider trading behind the scenes. Yep, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to leave a link to this video, too. This video is very informative. You need to watch this as well. But, guys, that's pretty much it. That's all I got for you today. I will be making a video about ownership and how that works with the cryptos. I wouldn't worry about it too much. I don't think it's going to change that much of my conviction on it. Just something I really did not look into, which I should have. And that's all my fault, okay? But pretty much, we're still good, guys. And, uh, you know, just keep studying, keep researching in these markets and thank